Kathleen, I hope you are here um, to talk about how to build a PMO in Monday.com because that is what we'll be talking about today. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Molly Yannis and uh, I am from Echo Consulting. So we are actually a consulting firm that specifically focuses on project management that fits the culture and organizational goals. Um, so we're really that kind of intersection between people, process and technology. Um, and so we use a, a variety of work management platforms and systems to help support clients that are looking to scale and automate and be more efficient. Um, really the problem that we feel super passionate about is honestly one of the problems that PMOs are looking to solve, which is that increasing transparency across the organization, improving accountability by understanding roles and responsibilities and, and, and delegation, um, and then really removing that friction, that feeling of like having to enter things in multiple places, multiple times, different people don't have the right visibility, what's up to date, all these tools in all these different places. And we are super excited because Monday is one of those work management platforms um, that we've really been able to help clients utilize to increase that transparency, accountability, and removing friction. So again, my name is Molly Yannis. I'm the founder of Echo Consulting. I'm also a solution architect. I am Monday.com certified and all that other good stuff. Um, I am known as the question queen. So I do want to set the expectation that while I do have a couple of slides and I will definitely be getting into the Monday.com platform for a couple of examples and tips and tricks, um, please don't hesitate to interrupt and ask questions. I have a couple members of my team on here that will be able to check the chat. I will also probably check the chat, um, but I have no problem with anyone that wants to raise their hand or honestly just interrupt and ask me for clarification if I'm going too fast or skimmed over something that is a problem that you're really struggling with. Um, so again, background, project management, technical project management, change management, Everyone deserves access to high quality experience project management solutions, break down the barriers to growth. We love what we're seeing in the industry, which is that that revolution of low code, no code technology and individuals really being able to solution um, and create really awesome scalable solutions um, without being blocked by a really heavy IT um, and customization presence. And that's why we're so excited about the Monday platform. So before I go too much further, I am going to do a really quick overview of what I mean when I say PMO, and we'll be talking a little bit about kind of the foundations that you're doing and you're going to need to create in Monday to make sure that you can have the value that we're looking at from your PMO and from Monday.com investment. So when I think about a PMO, right, I'm thinking about how new ideas and new projects um, are identified. And so in echo terminology, we call it intake. Oftentimes this is called a project list or project reviews and approvals. If you look at some of the templates that Monday has, um, but this is concept of how do we get ideas? How do we identify projects? How do we review, approve, make sure that we have the right information ahead of time so that we can make a very distinct decision that Yes, this is work that should move forward. It is aligned with the strategic goals of our organization or our um, our team or something like that, right? So there's authorization that needs to happen. Um, once that moves from an idea, a potential project, a initiative, a potential product, whatever you want to call this, right? There needs to be this kind of distinction where you are standing up the project templates, and we'll we'll go through a couple available in Monday um, um, out of the box and we'll talk about some of the some of the additions that Echo likes to bring to the fore for some of our clients, right? But when you stand up a project template, um, it's important to know like are there different types of project in your organization? So you need different tools. How do you not get into a situation where you have a seed, an apple, and a tree all in one thing, right? Like how do you compare apples to apples? What do, what do you need to standardize in order to get that visibility across your organization without stifling the creativity and the flexibility and the needs of their project management team to be able to work effectively and to, you know, to really tailor the solution to their specific needs. So coming up with that balance is a hard thing to do. And again, we're going to talk through a little bit of what we do with our enterprise clients, especially in Monday, um, to 
um, to standardize and to templatize some things, but to also leave that flexibility for your project managers to really bring their special sauce and your individual team members to be able to bring their special sauce. So once it is a project, right, there's this delivery and what visibility is needed, right, about what's happening when work is being executed. If there is a concept, a lot of our clients do have, you know, software as a service, like have products, projects that are software, but this isn't, we have monday.com. It's not only software. It's not only IT. We have a lot of marketing teams. We have some construction, right? It's not only marketing and it is not only software. I want to be very clear. This tool and a PMO is not specific to IT right? It's work in general. It can be within a specific team. So approval to go live. This really is a more about, I am transitioning this, right? From, from the, from the kind of like develop the idea, the, the, whatever you're building, whether it's a process, whether it's technology, whether it's a building, right? To, I authorize this to go into production, to be visible and used by people that are outside of the project team. That's what typically, we have clients that have multiple go lives. We have, you know, definitely iterative. We've used Monday.com not just for projects, but also for products and, and agile. So I don't want to exclude things here, but I do want to say that there's some sort of authorization to move. And that's really this in critical, important piece here, which is that moving to close, that transition between the project team and operations or support or the end users. So it's really critical right? That it's not just the project team and the project team gets stuck with this work forever and supporting this work because it's a huge drain and cause a ton of friction in organizations, okay? Similarly, right, just as in the beginning, we have a really hard time with communication um, in terms of ideas and how to get that idea into the project and like, moving into execution. There's also this idea of like actually archiving the project, moving it on. It's no longer in the project framework. It's now in a support framework, which also is available in Monday.com, by the way. But for the archiving of the project, right, like we are no longer tracking this project the health, the budget, there is some sort of stop. Just like there's some sort of go from an authorization, there's some sort of stop. This is not a project anymore. This is now support. This is now operations, okay? Now for a more mature organization, we wanna make sure that when we're setting up a PMO in Monday and any work management system, right? You want, the ideal scenario is to be able to forecast what you think you're gonna get out of this project and then measuring whether you were able to do this. So even though we're archiving the project, we don't wanna lose access to that really important data because you might have another project like that. You might say, hey, this project really didn't get what we thought. I don't want you to feel intimidated and not move forward with setting up a PMO for your organization or in monday.com because you don't have the ability to measure or to understand ROI and calculate it and all the other things. That's why we put this at the gray at the end right? The biggest piece first is making sure you can have a way to collect new ideas, a way to say, go ahead, deliver the projects, be able to transition it to support. These are the pieces that are super valuable, but typically come a little bit further on in the maturity of a PMO. Are there any questions and or anyone have a different perspective? When I say PMO, this is what I'm talking about, and this is what we're going to be working on in monday.com. I want to be clear, even though this is called a project management office, I want to be very clear here. I personally, and Echo does not believe that it's only projects. It can be features. It can be continuous improvement. It is not just technology, right? How does work get identified? How does it get approved and prioritized? How does it get executed so that the organization can see and not be pinging in a million different places? And then how does it close out and move into operations day to day? Any questions on that and what I'm talking about when I talk about a PMO? I'm going to keep moving, guys. OK, so I'm going to show you a couple of very high level examples of a, of a hierarchy um, in Monday. They have a template that I'm going to show you guys kind of that has a basic um, hierarchy, but I'm going to show you some of the areas that we see clients looking to break out of the, the templated mold, right? So you might be experienced with um, the different uh, like projects, right? And you want to be able to roll it up. So one way to roll it up is, is what's called a program. So sometimes for organizations, the program is um, like IT marketing operations. It follows more of like a, what I call like a department or an org structure way. In other cases, um, it actually does it more kind of like functionally. So we have organizations that like you have global marketing versus regional versus 
content or or something like that, right? So that these programs, this middle level um, is not a department, um, but instead it's like a, a categorization of types of projects that all might be within a department. So again, this is a very classic hierarchy of a PMO. It's got this portfolio view, this program view, which is a subset of projects that are all related to each other in some way, whether it's a team, whether it's an organization, whether it's a, a, a technology or a, a, a location of a site that has you know um, multiple buildings going on or enhancements. The other one that we oftentimes work with, and again, this is a little bit Typically, it's a little bit more enterprise in nature, right? But this ability to set up either a four or five level PMO. Um, so this is a little bit more advanced. It's typically a more mature organization. So it's this concept that, and we talk about it in terms of roles, and I'll be talking about it in just a second in terms of personas. But there's this idea that when you're rolling up information, different people need to see different information in different ways. And so in Monday, right? They have a couple of different ways of seeing the same information and you update it in one place, but you can see it in multiple different views so that the right people see the right information. And when we start talking about the capabilities in, in Monday dashboards and some of their other visualizations, it's not just that you can create a pretty visual, which you certainly can, but it's about creating visuals and using data in a way that drives action, in a way that drives people to what they can do to move the needle the most. So when you're looking at this and when you're creating dashboards, when you're thinking about the different views that you can have from the data, it's really critical that you break it down into who are the different audiences. And, and guess what? Not all the audiences fit in this beautiful hierarchical way that organizational charts work at, right? I might not only want the projects that are in like marketing because I might have marketing resources that are on an HR project or something like that, right? So oftentimes we talk with our clients about what we call matrix, right? It's not only hierarchy in terms of there's four or five levels. We're also saying that I need a view that's like, all of the different things that my team is working on and it's not just the projects that we are owning and that we are pushing i have resources on other things in the organization so this is a classic hierarchy this is this is a little bit more robust a little bit more advanced organization oftentimes we see a four or five level coming into play when you're talking more than 20 or 30 active projects if you have under 20 we try to keep clients to more of a two to you know like a two to three level or usually a three level um, so any questions on this? Is anyone not familiar with the concept that a PMO can have multiple levels and that the way that people view information is not always in a hierarchical way? All right, guys, I'll keep going. You know I love to talk. All right, so implementing a PMO. Here we go. Project Management Office, standardize the intake, the execution, and the prioritization projects focus attention on the highest impact projects. What's going to provide the most value? I'm going to give you a hint right now. It's not just the little priority column that we're going to talk about, right? It's the process. It's the automations and the reviews. How do we make sure that what we're working on is the most important thing? Laying the groundwork for successful execution. People that are sponsoring or paying for it that aren't paying attention. People that are on the project team but have five other priorities and they, they, they can't update things, right? So the PMO, and there's lots of different types of PMO. I have a whole nother webinar about project management offices in general so that we're not talking about that i want to make sure we get to monday but i want to be very clear here that it's not just the technology it's also the process and monday supports that with their automations with their workflows with their integrations and we're going to be talking about integrations and the importance of using integrations and and connecting multiple systems to make sure that people can adopt it, that you're meeting your project teams where they are at and where they are comfortable um, so that they can. When you're setting up a PMO, I mentioned people, process, and technology. The work management platform we're talking about today is monday.com. It is a platform that is very flexible and can continue to improve. They're adding new integrations. And, and, and honestly, I'm gonna show you the baseline capability today, which really takes them up a step in terms of project management. Um, there's the process, there's the process you currently have. And even if you have 20 different things in 20 different places, that doesn't mean you don't have a process. You still have a process. You're not happy with your process, but there is one. So you need to recognize, acknowledge where you are, 
understand there's going to be a transition and the change management, all right? Do not expect everyone to be as excited about the beautiful tool that is monday.com as you are as a leader, right? What is the value they're getting? Llamas are all cool and everything, and it is a good, you know, adds up when you first get there, but how are you keeping people engaged? How are they coming back? What value are you providing to them that they are going to update the information and give you that information? Spend time on that gap analysis in terms of where you are and where you're going. It's critical. Okay, I think we have a gap analysis resource um, that you can find too, Melissa, if you want to drop the line. But like we do have a gap analysis. It's high level, right? But this is what's current state. This is where we're going. These are the risks and issues we have to getting people there and understand that it's an iterative process. And what's fantastic about these work management platforms, what's fantastic about Monday is it can be iterative. You can create notifications, you can create automations, and then turn them on after your team has actually started to really adopt. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to show you because the example that I'll show you today, this is our process, right? So like we plan, design, build, test. We're very iterative because for Monday.com and for these work management systems, it's not a lot of customization. It really is configuration, right? We're very much like configure, demo, and feedback. So you can use the same thing within your team. Do not do what a lot of clients do, what a lot of teams do. Go have one individual go spend 40 or 80 hours doing beautiful, wonderful things completely in a little ecosystem in Monday and not include anyone else's ideas and stakeholders and things like that, right? You need to be configuring, demoing, getting feedback, making sure that you're consistent. The only exception to this rule is if you literally already have a system. So like we transitioned from Trello to Monday.com for one client, right? So we really were able to just like map being like, okay, this is how you did it here. This is how it is. That is a, we call it a, a shift, right? A lift and shift. That's different. That's really important that you have the right cut over and that you like have a moment being like, okay, don't update anything in here. We're moving over here. That's a lift and shift. In most cases, organizations are looking to make process improvements. They're looking to get people ramped up and, and collaborating in a different way. And so it's very important that you have those st stakeholders. Um, and then training and adoption. Monday is awesome at Google, right? Like, so you can Google stuff and Monday has a great system. They're super approachable. They have a lot of resources. I'm gonna call out a couple of them. We Google, right? I, hey, something's not coming up. What's the difference between my Monday project and Monday work OS? What's the difference? I Google, I'm an expert. I build out hundreds of PMOs, I Google. So I, I just wanna make sure it is okay. Monday has good resources for you. Okay. Oh, I'm almost done, right? Okay. It's, I'm only 20 minutes in. I got plenty of time. I want half an hour in Monday. All right. Crawl, walk, run, right? So when you think about it, if you don't have a PMO in your organization and you're really looking, even if you do, you want to have now like, analyze where you are now, right? The first thing I ask any client, right? When Because usually clients are coming to me like, oh, hey, we want Monday.com. We want to implement Monday.com. Great. Awesome. We love Monday. That, that's awesome. Okay. Do you have a project list? <laughs> Do you have one place that all of your work exists, right? I don't care if it's in Excel. I don't care if it's on analog. I don't care. Do you have a list? I don't care if it's sticky notes. That's great, right? Do you have a place where all of your new projects, all of your projects list? Like when someone has a new idea or a new project, where does it go? Okay. It's okay if it's a form, Google form, whatever. That's fine, but somewhere, right? Do we understand whether it's a project phase or an approval or a status or something? Do you have some sort of language that your organization uses to understand where in the progression that is, right? It doesn't need to be an eight or 10 um, step process. I love how Monday really tries to keep it simple, right? Like not started in progress, like you got this or, or something like that. It can be simple, start simple, right? Don't overcomplicate just because, um, because you can go, oh, well, what about this? Like plan for the 80%, use the 80% rule. Okay. Next is configuring the additional data and automating those basic workflows. I want to be really careful here because we have so many clients that go to implement Monday, go to implement work management systems and really struggle here, right? You need to make sure that you're automating the 
basic workflows first, the ones that everyone has already adopted and the one that everyone's comfortable with. A lot of times people are building really big, complex, heavy workflows with tons of different ideas of how things should go. And they, they, they really miss it. They haven't adopted that workflow yet. So understand the workflow first from a manual basis, get people on board with that, and then make their life easier by getting rid of those repeat stuff. And again, focus on those most frequent ones, those ones that people are comfortable with. That is where you will get the most value from this tool. And yes, it can do some really cool, complex things, and we love it. But start with the basics, okay? Automate, integrate, customize, make it yours, own it. Your culture, your team, what you need to really do this. The, the power is in the flexibility. Um, okay. All right. I'm almost done here, guys. Okay. Identifying roles. We talk about this. High-level PMO is what our concept is. So there's the senior leadership. Maybe there's a financial component or there's something like that, right? There's a project manager. There's a project sponsor or budget owner or department lead, whatever you call it in your organization. There's someone that is a resource manager. And when I say a resource manager, it's someone that is the manager of the people that are on your team, the project team. They are authorizing people to work on that versus their full-time day job. It is important that you understand what they need so that they can commit their resource and tell them that this, this project is a priority, right? Oftentimes, this resource manager is overlooked until organizations really get into the time tracking and, and things like that. Um, but it's a really critical role for a, a successful project. And then your project team member. And again, meeting project teams where uh, members where they're at. One of the things that we love about Monday and is that you can move from a situation where the project manager is managing all the tasks and is basically like a herder of cats and a purse and a checker of boxes to teams being able to go in and add their own tasks or their own subtasks and being able to update this and feel good about it and knowing what's coming. Really getting your project team members into this system is critical, but you need to make sure that you're adding value to them. There's something that you are giving them that they want that's gonna make their life easier before you go add a whole bunch of stuff and say, hey, you gotta do this, 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 and this, and this. That's, that's gonna not adopt you're going to be in the same spot, no matter how beautiful the tool is, you're still going to be the one checking off all the boxes. So it's really important to spend some time thinking about what does my project team member do? A lot of organizations have a single person on multiple projects. So if I'm a project manager and all I'm showing them is my project plan, my project dashboard, right? I need you to, but that's not the way my brain's working because I'm on five different projects. So it's absolutely critical that you think about your project team member and they don't want to go to your project dashboard. You know why? Because you're only one of five. So give them a view that speaks to them and speaks to what they need to see to be effective and to move the needle for you. Okay. In case you can't tell, I feel rather passionately about this subject. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Transparency, prioritization, quality and consistency, accountability, the ability to roll up across, right? Not just having depth views, but rolling up across. Um, being able to do resource allocation. We'll talk briefly about what's, um, what Monday has out of the box, right? And just a couple of the integrations that they have, okay? And then uh, governance, right? There's different types of PMO. If you're interested in the PMO one, Melissa, if you can drop in like our PMO webinar, if you love talk, you talking about the subject, happy to look at that. But like, is your... Is your PMO something that is telling everyone you must do things this way? This is the priority coming down from high? Or is this, these are tools you can use. These are templates you can use. These are things. So think about, I, I talk about it again, personas, but like what, is, like what is that persona of your PMO? What are you looking for, right, from your PMO? Is it governance? Is it do it this way? And if you don't do it this way, I can, you know, I'm, I'm coming down on you tracking and analyzing, collecting data, being able to look at charts, identifying trends. I love this because what I'm looking here is not beautiful data. What I'm looking here is identifying areas of risk, identifying outliers, identifying things that like can, can be applied, lessons learned across projects and things like that. Identifying that there's too many things starting at the same time. Okay, Monday, manage everything with one visual platform. Yes, it's a work OS. What did I say? Low code, no code. You do not need to be a developer. 
it's awesome. Okay. Um, also, what's really nice, they talk about building blocks, items, and things like that, but also, right, it's that connectivity. So they have really good integrations and the ability to kind of bring in multiple tools. Um, so work management, right, they talk about these different things, forms, surveys, timelines. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest. I put this here because we are a Monday certified partner and, you know, that's that. But I'm not 100% clear. We've been building out on Monday Work OS for so long that I'm not really 100% certain Monday projects is that different. I personally believe that it's Monday looking to be more distinctive in specific verticals. So like you'll see Monday CRM and things like that. Um, everything that we've built so far has been in uh, Monday. I think it's called Work OS or Work Management. So um, I'll show you um, just so that you can kind of have that idea. But I, I wouldn't say that it's um, you need Monday projects. It is a little bit different licensing, I think, too. So i um, happy to dig into that, people. But um, I personally think like and most of what we do is through Monday.com. Um, we are a certified partner. I think Melissa can give you guys like a link if you if you haven't purchased Monday yet and you're looking at it. Um, you can certainly use us as saying, hey, we provided it. We typically actually don't get involved in licensing. Like I actually don't take any commissions from anything because I believe in whatever tool is going to work best for you. Right. So I don't care necessarily if it's Monday or if it's a different work management platform. I don't care if you're using the Monday whiteboard versus uh, a Teams whiteboard versus a Miro or something like that. That doesn't matter to me. I know that each client, each team has different needs, and I'm looking to kind of provide them the tools to be able to solve problems in a fast way. OK, any questions on this? I'm not going to dig too deep into licensing. I think some of you guys already have this. I mentioned really quickly, and then I'm going to get into this, but the resources. So Monday has training, right? They have a template center I'm going to show you. They have a help center, knowledge basis. If you want to like do a very prescriptive way through the training and, and ramp up on it, honestly, I Google and their community is super responsive and their people are just really down to earth. I don't feel like they're super technical and like judgmental or something on questions. I just really like the tone. Monday puts a lot into their branding, into their tone. And, and honestly, I'm on LinkedIn and Monday is like very fast on their LinkedIn and they're pretty funny. So FYI, I do recommend Google. All right, um, I'm gonna pause. Melissa, anyone, any questions or anything like that before I dive into Monday? All right, everyone's pretty quiet. All right, good with it. OK. I didn't do a poll ahead of this, so I don't know who has been in Monday and who hasn't been in Monday. So I'm going to do like a really quick overview and just talk about kind of where to get started. So. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is. Um, let's see here. When you come to Monday, when you come to any brand new tool. I don't ever recommend starting from scratch, right? Even if you end up going off on your own and starting from scratch after the fact, I always start with kind of like what those templates are because very quickly those templates stood up can help me determine, oh, it doesn't have this, it needs this. And it'll give you some examples to start from and it'll give you ideas. So the first thing I'm gonna do, if you come over here on the left-hand side, right? I'm in a workspace. I'm in a workspace that is called demo workspace, which is what we're gonna be working in today, right? And I'm going to click this add button. Now, when I click an add button, right, I can add a new folder, I can add a new dashboard, a new doc, a new board, and things like that, right? Or I can choose from templates. So the very first thing I'm going to do before I talk about the difference between a workspace and a folder and the importance of how that works with um, hierarchies and everything, the first thing I'm going to do is choose from templates, right? So when I go from choose from templates, you'll see that Monday in work management has already broken it down for you into different kind of categorizations, right? So they actually have a category for project management here. And then from that, they have a variety of different tools, okay? So one thing I might start with is like a multi-project. The other one is um, the one that I typically used to start with is called the project portfolio management. FYI, PMO, PPM, basically the same thing, right? Project portfolio management or project management office or organization, like same concept. So the one that I typically look at, um, I, I used to go through, right, this project portfolio management. We can look at multi-project too. But see here how you have the integrations right down here that are already set up in this solution set. Um, so I can see that this already integrates with Jira, Google Drive, Excel, teams like in this example 
Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Toggle is another time tracking. So I think I mentioned like Monday has its own time tracking, like native to the platform, but it also has um, integrations with others, which I really like about them. They're not exclusive. Some of the other competitors in the space like have purchased a resource management platform and they're like trying to integrate it and everything like that. But I like the way that Monday is very open about using tools that your team might already like for other reasons. There's this balance between the complexity of having multiple tools versus being on one platform, which can sometimes decrease the technical debt of just having like one platform, but it also can like limit the scalability or the usability when your team already likes something. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. Um, all right. So if we go ahead and use this um, template, I can decide what workspace I'm going to put it in so I can either create a new workspace or I can put it into the workspace that I'm already in right so I'm going to just put it into the demo workspace it's going to create my template boards um, and then we're going to go from there so it takes a second um, again for me when I'm first exploring or if when I'm training people and they've used a free um, like a free uh, what's it called, like a free trial or something like that. It's like, start from here. See if your project data that you have now can translate it in here. The other way to do this, okay, so here's this. I've kind of started it out. Look, this is the project portfolio management immediately put in, in here for me. And the three components that they have are the same things that we talked about, right? So the first one is the project requests and approvals. So what we just talked about is intake. These are new projects that we have. Okay, so what they provided you is a new project request and approval process. And then up here, right, you have project requests form. And what this is allowing you to do is have people put in specific information for this. So this is all customizable. It's work forms and everything. You can edit the form. You can add a, a bunch of different things here. So for um, Echo, one of the things we recommend for our clients is making sure that you separate out the initial intake from the from kind of a higher, more in-depth work. We talk about progressive elaboration. So when we do this, right, we actually say like a project name, a high level description, right? And we actually just do, for example, like what department it's part of or, or, or something like that, right? Or what initiative or what strategic objective it is. Once it gets through an initial review, then we actually have an update where we have someone that needs to go put in and say, OK, anticipated outcomes or like sizing or things like that. So I want to be clear that like when you're talking about new ideas, it's actually a multi step process. Um, OK, so I'm not going to get too deep into forms, but again, you can edit forms. Um, the big piece here is that you can add multiple different views, right? So the main table is going to be the table. It's going to have all the information. I think everyone should be familiar with the concept of groups and things like that. They've grouped this by what I call, you know, status, right? So request status, new request under consideration and things like that. So the initiator is one role. That's the requester in the way Echo talks about it. But the big piece here that I think that they're missing and I always have teams add is who it is currently assigned to. Right? So, okay, great. You just added a new request. Well, I see that it's on this list, but I don't know what the next step is. I don't know. So what happens is, is people don't end up adopting these intake request forms because they don't know what the, and I'll be technical here, SLA, right? But they don't know what they should expect for a response and when they should get that response. And like, who has looked at it? Has anyone even looked at this, right? Everything goes into a new request. Well, I want to see the trend between when it went from a new request to under consideration, who's the decision making body and things like that. So I always recommend, right, that we're going in here and that we're adding a column, right, and that you use the sign to. I just want to touch base here, right? So um, Monday has like a, a bunch of different um, column types, and then there is some difference in terms of what you can use based on your licensing model. So I will just kind of put that in there for right now. I'm more familiar with like enterprise and kind of the higher licensing models. Um, but you want to make sure that when you start building out a solution, you are focused on getting the right columns, right? So the right column types. People is how Monday says, right? So add to board. You can have multiple people aisles and you can quickly update this, right? So this is assigned to. Right, so who is this currently assigned to? Not just who requested it, but who it is assigned to, okay? Now with this, there's a couple of different things you can do with it, right? So the first thing is, is you can automatically assign it. So in your organization, if there's one person that's in charge of managing this board or this pipeline, 
that person can be automatically assigned. And that is where you can go ahead, right, and automate. So you can automate and you can either collect from like existing automations or you can create from scratch. Different people like different things, right? Um, so what I would say is you um, can go ahead and say, OK, I need to notify someone when the status change to notify someone. Does that make sense? Um, when an item is created, assign creator as a specific person or something like that. So you can create a automation that says every time a new idea comes in, assign it to Mark, right? And then Mark can then divvy it up for you in terms. So again, this is a business process decision, but one of the biggest things from an adoption standpoint of getting people to put all of their ideas in one place is making sure that they know who it's owned by, what the process is in terms for it to be reviewed. I have seen so many clients with a 500 different ideas and they're not organized and no one really trusts that anything's going to happen. So it is really important that you manage this intake process, okay? The next one is um, the, the portfolio management. So let's say an idea is authorized and we're saying, yep, it's approved. Whoever's prioritized, go forward with it, right? The next step is to be able to look at all of your projects in one place and understand where they are in progress, okay? So in this case, the way they've grouped it is upcoming projects, right? So projects that haven't started yet, for example. And again, this data is old, so it's actually showing backwards. but and then there's the current projects and then there are closed projects. So what did I talk about archiving projects, right? Like archiving projects, oftentimes we have organizations archive things after a quarter or six months or depending on the data that we need. So again, this is only showing here. There are other ways to sort this. You don't have to sort this um, by the, the, the project phase, right? Sometimes we sort this by project manager, right? I wanna see, oh, hey, I wanna see all of Melissa's projects. I wanna see all of Lisa's projects. The way I oftentimes do the portfolio is actually by health, right? So we have this concept of project health and we say, okay, I wanna see the red projects versus the yellow versus the green, okay? Does that make sense to everyone? So this is a, a look of all of the authorized projects, right? The ones that are moving forward. And then the last piece of the template is the project board. Um, and so the project board is project specific information, right? So it's task level, activity level. The portfolio management board should only be a single project and the information about that project. Now, in the template that Monday has provided, they just have the project manager. In most cases, we recommend at minimum that we do a project sponsor column for each project. Who is the person that is responsible for paying, is responsible for making sure that this moves forward? We need to clarify the role between a project manager that is focusing on the delivery, right? And the sponsor, which is authorizing it, which is making sure that there's um, executive buy-in um, and making sure that it's aligned with the strategic goals of the organization and all those other things. So at minimum, if you're going to do a portfolio management board um, uh, table, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have those right roles. We talked about accountability briefly, and this is really important too, by having this project manager as well as the sponsor. And then oftentimes we'll have like a functional lead too. So we see organizations that are looking for kind of like a functional lead. Um, oftentimes this functional lead is someone that is um, oftentimes reports to a sponsor, especially if the project manager is like a shared resource in the organization. So having that functional lead, calling that out, it's really, really critical that each role in your project at a high level is defined and they know what the responsibilities are. There will be cases where a project manager also plays the role of a sponsor or also plays the role of a functional lead. That's okay, but they're two different sets of roles and responsibilities and it's like multiple hats. It's like wearing multiple hats. It doesn't go away. The need for a sponsor does not go away if the project manager is a sponsor. There's a set of rules and responsibilities associated with that. So what I don't want you to do, and what I've also seen clients do, right, is they literally add 20 different people fields. That's not the right place, right? Like the project team should be managed in a stakeholder list, in a contact list somewhere else. Um, really, you're looking for a quick glance. Who's the sponsor? Who's the project manager? And then the next step up in the maturity is adding a functional lead, okay? The next piece that I'm always recommending is that you have project phase, which is great, but I like to always separate out the project phase or the stage or the step from 
the status, okay? So see here how this is project phase is upcoming and current projects. I use a status column here. And when I add a new status column right now, I haven't done any configured columns here, right? You see what Monday provides is out of the box, right? Working on it, stuck, done. That doesn't really make sense for me for a project status. It makes sense for me for a task status, although I like to have a couple more options. But from a project status, right, I want to think about, right, so it could be upcoming, which is not started, right? But you could also have um, project phase be, for example, and again, this is what I like to do, right, in um, upcoming, it could be in discovery is what we typically use in ours. And so if I click here, I can click edit labels, and I'm just going to switch this to discovery, um, right, or I can add a new one, right? So I like to do this. So these are the project phases, right? And I say that the status is not started. So the way I do it is there's a status, and then there's a project phase. So I do here, I'm going to do status, uh, not status, sorry, guys, not started, right? So the, the phase that it's in is discovery, potentially, or um, pre-approval or, or, or whatever that looks like, but it, the status of the project right now is not started. Another status that could be, right, is not stuck, but like um, blocked, right? So one of the things they have um, is talking about um, predecessors, and we'll get into that or we might not have time for that today, but we could talk a little bit about that from a project standpoint, but projects can have predecessors too, not just tasks. So anyways, it might be blocked. Um, you might have it be done or completed, which they're calling it closure, but it might also be canceled, um, right? And I wanna talk about this because this is something that like, and I'm gonna change the color because obviously canceled shouldn't be green. Um, when we're talking about canceled, this is an important thing, and it, it, it really can cause a lot of PMs a little bit of um, difficulty, right? Like, because the grief of working on this project and not having it come to life. But it is important that projects can go part way and be canceled. And that is a part of the life cycle of a project. Sometimes they are canceled. Sometimes they are on hold. And that is different. Um, and Oh, oops, I did the default. Um, hmm, okay, so one thing just to notice, right, is that see how this is like a little bit, um, it's a little bit less white than this, right? So the default la label, um, so this is important, right? That like, um, so whether you say uh, the, the default can either be, for example, not started, right? That's one way to do this is make this not started instead right or you can just basically like not categorized or not known or not applicable or some not applicable but like not known okay so instead this can be for example in progress right all right so again the piece i want to actually say here i don't trying to get to everything but like when i come to this template when i think about portfolio there's three main components there's how does the work come in right how am i viewing the work during delivery and then like how am i feeding this information so for me I actually, if I'm starting from scratch, I don't do a separate project requests and approvals from a portfolio. I just do a project list. And so the the project phase or something like that, I actually have a different one, which is like um, uh, request phase or something like that. But it depends on your organization, how many things you have, who's involved in the approval process versus ongoing. The reason I like to combine this project request and approval and portfolio management is because I constantly want to be aware that an idea could be a higher priority than an existing project. And that's like super taboo, like tab taboo rather um, for project managers, because obviously the authorized project is always most important. But um, sorry, guys, I have a background in economics. So like to me, it's like it's a sunk cost, right? If if the if we need to pivot and there's a new idea that's going to add more value, we need to do that and we need to be OK with that. So we shouldn't be separating out or segregating ideas from projects. But there is information that you have on projects that you don't have information on a request or on an idea, right? So like the health, the project manager, the project manager is not assigned at the point of an idea, right? Typically a project manager is assigned when the project is authorized to move forward. All right, time check, 15 minutes. Okay, so project phase, project status should be different, having multiple different roles, understanding what the roles are. So here I have a project budget. Um, and I want to, I just want to clarify. So one of the things that um, most organizations struggle with is change management, right, is only managing changes to budget. And um, and one of the things that smart uh, that um, Monday recently uh, rolled out 
here is the ability to baseline a schedule. And so I do want to call this out. I think I set it up on our example. So we have an example um, project plan just to go from, right? So this is kind of one of our examples of a project plan. This isn't the one that they provided in your project board. But you'll see here a couple of different things, right? We always have an assigned to. We did use sub items. Um, you can kind of see this progress tracking. We did add dependencies. So this is um, some work, uh, some work management call this predecessors, right? But like if one task dependent on another task, one of the things to know about that um, is that you can come to settings and within the dependency column, you can determine um, whether um, it's strict or flexible. So basically in a flexible piece, um, it means that the timeline will adjust based on the changes of the task ahead. So if one task pushes out, it'll automatically push things out. One of the things that I love about Monday.com, right, is the ability to shift. So let me show you one of my favorite things. Maybe you all know, and this is just super easy, right? But like, let's say the contract, oh, Oh, this is baseline. OK, so let's say the contract moved out, right? So it was on the 10th or something like that and something else is right. I can select over here, right? And oh, I can select the timeline here and I have this shift selected items by date. So don't get me wrong, project management best practices, add your dependencies, use strict, be a, you know, a solid project manager, but I like to meet project managers where they're at. I like to meet people where they're at. Not everyone is a full-time project manager. Not everyone understands how this works. Monday has a really cool thing. It's called shift. So I can actually go ahead and shift all of these tasks at once by five days. And what's cool about this is I don't have to go through all the work to actually look at the dependent on, right? Like I can just mark this and I can shift and look, 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 it's magic. Oh, can't batch update dependent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so let me go down here and show because I was showing the dependency. So basically it's like one or the other, right? So um, typically you're, you're using dependencies, which is again is best practices, right? Or you're going ahead and picking it here. So I'm sorry about that. Again, I use multiple different work management platforms, right? Don't don't betray, right? So I'm shifting this by five days. Oh, I didn't um, save. I don't know why this isn't working, guys. Sorry, this is my favorite tool. <laughs> Let's just try it one more time and then I will just, I. Someone will let someone tell me why this isn't working for me because it usually does. Shift by five days. All right. Ah, there we go. I promise. So what had happened just barely, guys, is I had had a dependent and then it hadn't refreshed. So sorry, that was on me. Not my best moment. Give me some, you know, give me some room here. Okay. All right, so a couple of different things. So previously in our template, we had created our own baseline. And the reason that we had done that was frankly because Monday didn't have baseline yet. So what we were doing is basically creating our timeline and creating a baseline timeline. And when I say baseline, right? Are you guys not seeing my screen? Is everyone, can someone confirm that you're seeing a screen that says PMO Kickstart? We can see the top of the page. It's, it's blurred out at the bottom. Oh, hmm. Let me just, oh. Sorry, guys. Thanks for giving me the heads up. Let me share again. Okay, so there is a reason that you can't shift things like that, right? Which is like you either use dependencies or you use shift. So um, I recommend dependencies. That's a more mature project management process and everything. But like shift is super useful and it's way better adopted by non PMs. And I love the fact that Monday has like made that that feature more accessible. All right, I'm hoping that you guys are seeing something called PMO Kickstart Implementation Plan. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about here is that Monday does have a new feature, which is called Baseline Timeline. So up here, I'm looking at my Gantt chart. This is how I typically go to it, right? And like you have the ability to add the baseline. Um, and the baseline, you it's a snapshot in a lot of the work management systems out here, right? But like you add a new uh, uh, add a new snapshot. So I can snapshot a specific pace. See how you see critical path is in beta and baselines in beta. 
honestly, Monday is investing more in their project. And that's kind of shown by that release of Monday project. Like they're trying to provide a more robust project aspect, just like they have kind of come up through in, in CRM, right? So like Monday has been used by CRM by small limited um, small companies that didn't have another CRM, but Monday's making a conscious investment into the CRM space, and they're making a conscious investment into the mark into the um, into the project management space. So they're not just kind of like, a, oh, you could use it for this, but like we actually know project management best practices, you know, portfolio, and we're going to move forward. And you can see that in their content, and you can see that in some of the new features that they're providing. Um, and so here's an example of this. You can see that critical path is in beta and you can see baselines in beta. So you can add a new snapshot. It's going to take a picture basically like this is the current um, dates that we have. And then if I go ahead, right, and I, okay, sorry. If I go ahead and I change this and everything, I can see the difference um, between the baseline and the and the current state, right? Does that make sense? And I can kind of unbaseline it if I don't want to show that too. And then see here how it took a snapshot. So like I had done this earlier, so I can see multiple different baselines, which is really cool. Okay, anyone question? Everyone understand kind of baseline how that works? I think that's cool. All righty. Um, a couple other things. Um, so do, 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 do. Um, when you're going ahead here, so as a PMO, you need to be thinking about for a PMO, like, are you going to force people to use your project board template? Or are you allowing people to kind of create their own templates? And what is really critical here so that you can provide this cross project visibility is to make sure that you've identified what columns are standard for your organization or for your projects and which ones are not, right? So if you have um, a status or something like that, you want those statuses across all of the different things. And there's a couple of different ways. So enterprise, you can create, um, you can create templated columns. Um, here, you can go ahead and create a template board um, or you can just duplicate. And there's two different things, right? So um, if you save it as a template, it's going to um, it's going to be able to be accessed, right, um, by other people to use that template. For duplicating board, it's taking a snapshot in the moment, and you can make a choice, right, on if it's the structure and the items, the structure and the items and the updates. So, for example, if I was doing a project and I was, I don't know, doing a um, quarterly uh, marketing plan or something like that, right? I probably want the structure, which is the column types and the items, because there might be a lot of um, overlap, but I don't want the updates to that, right? I don't want the history. I don't want the specific items. In some cases, if I'm not providing them the actual task level, level information, I only want the structure. So I only want the columns that they have. One of the things I'll just mention, and again, I, I'm hoping this is like basic Monday to everyone, but like each project can be like a different order in terms of which columns and you can add new columns to the project board but the goal is to have the 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 columns like the structured data be the same so that we can roll it up into portfolio management the number one thing i recommend right and and we didn't get to the what i wanted to which was talking about mirroring and talking about connecting boards and things like that because that's the super powerful piece of that portfolio so i think we'll have to do another um another session on this, but um, what's really important is pulling information up from the project board so that people don't have to view it, it uh, don't have to look at it um, in multiple different places, right? Like, they don't have to update it in multiple places. So I find the most useful thing for the portfolio is to have a health. And so for us at Echo, we use project health, like overall health, but we also do budget health, schedule health, um, uh, scope health, right? And that is a really quick stoplight to be able to see, okay, so in this project, is it green? Is it yellow? Is it red? And then I can go to other things. So Echo uses a variety of different tools. We also use something that's called like a crate log. So we have a combination of the project board, right? Or the project and what we call a crate log or a raid log that's managing the risks, the issues, the decisions, the action items. And it's a combination of the individual tasks and the individual opportunity um, activities that are happening within a project, 
versus all that ad hoc stuff, like whether there's an open question. And we use that instead of our meeting notes and things like that, because then we can track action items. And you better bet that there's an assigned to. And what's fantastic about that is then if you have an individual like, let's say, Kiefer, right, that has project tasks across multiple projects and has risks and issues and things like that, um, they are able to um, they're able to see all of the different items that are on their list, not just project tasks, because they probably had action items from a meeting that they had to attend. They probably have an open decision that they need to make and they need to be able to see everything. So you start from these different tables. Um, we didn't get into, oh gosh, we didn't get into a lot of stuff I want to get into. Okay, so there's workspaces, which is oftentimes how we do it from a permissioning standpoint. And then there are folders. Um, and so typically I'm using the workspaces, right? Um, I, I mean, we've done it both ways, but oftentimes like we, we do it more in the hierarchical way. So like you can have IT versus um, PMO, but when you're doing uh, IT versus like marketing or something like that, but if you have a lot of cross dependencies and you're looking and you have a lot of resources that are across, then you wanna be keeping it as much as possible in the same one so that you can do that mirroring. I wanted to touch base just really quick before I headed out. Um, there is a couple of limitations to mirroring that I wanna make sure. So it's really important you get the design right, which is you can only do the mirroring, um, I think across three boards, you can't do it across four. So you wanna make sure that you have the right. So when we talked about it, we had five different, um, Brooklyn, sorry, I've, I've got a, a kid at home, sorry guys. Um, so when we were talking about the presentation, Right, we were talking about how you could have like a five level or you could have lots of different um, uh, personas. And it is important that you really prioritize and you understand kind of where those overlap because there is a limitation in terms of the places that you can mirror it. All righty, I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I've only got two minutes left. Monday.com implementations. We do Monday.com implementations. We support teams that have already started using Monday.com but are looking to make it more scalable and um, really work for their organization. Um, we do have an upcoming event, but it's actually for a different um, platform, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, that's pretty much it. I will pause if anyone has a question. Um, if I didn't get to a question. I didn't get to everything I wanted to get. I'm sorry. Feel free to type the message in and we'll include it kind of in um, a response out. So I want to be clear here. We will send out the recording of this. We will send out the deck, the high level deck that we talked about. Um, and uh, definitely don't hesitate to reach out with questions. Um, we have a YouTube channel that we use to start doing videos. and We're going to be adding a lot more Monday.com videos coming up. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, at Echo, we learn, share, grow, care. So go share the word, learn. Um, and we are, um, we're here if you need help.